Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. In our third installment of our Q&A series, I'm going to be selecting a few comments that have been made on our YouTube channel over the last week and answering them in person. We appreciate all of our subscribers and especially your comments, and I enjoy getting back to most all of those comments personally. As a token of our appreciation for your involvement, we're going to be giving a free pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces to each of the individuals whom we've selected for this Q&A series. Our first comment is from Michael on the first polish for my Dimitri Gomez bespoke shoes. His question is, Hi Kirby, I got a new pair of shoes recently, but instead of having used the Renovator, I forgot, I just used a cream polish, buffed it off, then the Pat Deluxe and buffed it off. Is it too late to apply the Renovator now, or should I just wait until my next polish? Uh, thanks, Michael. So Michael's question is really uh, about how to polish a new pair of shoes. And we actually have a video on our YouTube channel speaking specifically about the, the routine that one would find with a new pair of shoes. Whenever you receive a new pair of shoes, it's nice to condition the leather thoroughly because you don't know how long those shoes have sat uh, and the leather normally is pretty dehydrated because you don't see any type of conditioning or finishing from any factories. So that's why we recommend uh, conditioning with the Saphir Renovator followed by the cream and wax polishes. Now, if you skipped using the Saphir Renovator during that process, it's no big deal because the Saphir Pomadeur Cream Polish is also a fantastic conditioner. So Michael, I just simply recommend holding off on the Renovator until the next time you polish your shoes. Thank you for your question, and we look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces. Our next question is from Evan Moore on my shoe collection video. His comment reads, this is a great video. 15 years to accumulate such a beautiful collection of shoes. Do you have a stopping point in mind? Also, how many do you have in total? Uh, Evan, a great question. Uh, you know, I think I've actually uh, made a point not to count how many pairs of shoes I have because that would be embarrassing. And I want plausible deniability whenever my wife asks me. <laughs> The beauty of Bespoke is that the price point really forces one, especially someone like me on a budget, uh, to really slowly and deliberately acquire shoes uh, over years, if not decades. At this point, I'm really just adding two to three pairs of shoes max per year. Uh, and that's really a good pace to really kind of add and build out uh, my wardrobe of shoes. But it's important to understand that, you know, my collection started in college uh, with shoes that I was buying on sale uh, and through friends. And so, uh, you know, even someone that 15 years later, you know, has a pretty significant shoe collection, it didn't start that way. Uh, it's important to just recognize that it's been a very slow evolution. And it took me a long time before I ever bought my first pair of shoes that cost more than $400. Uh, and that was a big deal to me whenever I was able to afford that. Uh, and those were my Alfred Sargent shoes. And then after that, I still remember buying my first pair of Gatian and Girlings. You know, they cost over $1,000, and I thought it was just absolutely insane uh, to be spending that much money on a pair of shoes. But I received them and absolutely loved wearing them and received so many compliments and found that once I had upgraded to that quality level, uh, that I really wasn't wearing any of my other shoes. And so that's kind of how one really uh, develops and upgrades their shoe collection over time. You know, you acquired a certain quality level that your budget allows. Uh, then, you know, if you're lucky, you're able to go up a rung in that ladder uh, and you begin acquiring at that, at that quality level. Yeah, so the video on my shoe collection really isn't meant to discourage anyone, but to really show uh, that a shoe collection uh, is an evolutionary journey, and that's really part of the fun of developing one uh, if you're someone that's really into shoes. Uh, thanks, Evan, for your question, uh, and I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces to use on one of your pair of shoes. And Evan, we'd love to see some of your shoes. You know, if you post them on Instagram and use the hashtag ShoeShineSunday, uh, we enjoy seeing those and actually repost a lot of photographs from our customer's shoes uh, on our Instagram channel. So uh, if you're polishing a pair of shoes, take a quick snap, post it on Instagram and tag Hanger Project and hashtag ShoeShineSunday. Question number three is from a user called Jellyfish703. Uh, and it's on our How to Condition Leather Shoes video, uh, where we talk about the three primary conditioners that Saphir Medal d'Or sells for leather shoes, the Saphir Renovator, the Saphir Mink Oil, and the Saphir Napa Leather Balm. 
His question is, if you're to buy only one, which one do you choose? Well, the simple question is, of course, the Saphir Renovator. The Saphir Renovator is what we call here at the Hangar Project liquid gold. And the reason is because it is such an incredible all-purpose conditioner. Uh, it does a great job nourishing and conditioning the leather, but it also contains some waxes, so it produces a nice soft shine. And if you were really to just have one product only, the Saphir Renovator would be what we would recommend. As a neutral, it's incredibly versatile. You can use it on any any color shoes, uh, but you can also use it on multiple materials. It's uh, safe to use on calfskin, cordovan, alligator, crocodile, ostrich. I mean, there's hardly a smooth leather that the Saphir Renovator can't be used on. Now, the only limitation of the Saphir Renovator is that it doesn't have any type of pigment. So at a certain point, you do need to use a cream polish such as the Saphir Pomadeer Cream Polish to introduce pigment because inevitably, if you're wearing a pair of shoes, they're gonna become nicked or scuffed or have a little bit of discoloration. And so the pigments help just renew the patina, the finish of a pair of shoes. Now the mink oil uh, is 100% mink oil. It's a new product that Saphir came out with and it's a great, really potent conditioner, uh, but it's something that's really meant for more occasional use. And then the Saphir Napa, again, great product. Uh, it is just a conditioning agent, doesn't contain any waxes, and is certainly the, the safest and most uh, almost inert polish to use. Uh, if you're ever worried about any type of discoloration, uh, or if you're worried about changing the texture of the leather, then the Saphir Napa Bomb is great to use, uh, but it's certainly more specialized than, say, an all-purpose product like the Saphir Renovator. Uh, thanks, Jellyfish. We appreciate your comments uh, and look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces to use on a pair of your shoes. Our next uh, question is from uh, Alexander Ung, and his uh, question is on our George Cleverly uh, First Polish video. It reads, I'm a bit confused about which brushes to have to clean and buff shoes. In my case, I own two brushes, one black and one neutral. I used the black one to clean and buff my black shoes and the neutral one to clean and buff my Color 8 Cordovan shoes. If I ever buy a whiskey or a light brown pair of shoes, would I need to buy another brush? Or can I use the same brush that I use for my Color 8? Should I keep cleaning my shoes with the same brushes that I use to buff the creams and polishes? Uh, Alexander, this is a really common question that we get, and we actually have a video on our YouTube channel where we speak specifically about this. So the whole entire idea with having two shoe shine brushes, one with dark bristles and one with lighter color bristles, is to help you differentiate which brush you use to buff off your dark polishes, like a black or a really dark brown, and which you use to buff off your lighter polishes, like your uh, cordovan uh, or a light brown shoe. And the reason is because every brush you use is gonna develop residual traces of the polish, and you want to prevent any type of streaking that might occur if you were to take a brush that you're using for your dark colored shoes and then buff off something that's lighter in color. So that's really the purpose of having two. The black and the light bristles are really to just help you visually understand which is used for what colors. You know, as far as cleaning your shoes, uh, the same brush you use to buff off polish can be used to clean your shoes at the end of the day uh, or before you start polishing. Any type of muddy or salty shoe or any shoe that's really heavily soiled, uh, you would always wanna clean that off first using a damp cloth uh, or one of our uh, cleaning daubers uh, with a little bit of leather cleaning soap uh, first before you really use any of your shoe shine brushes to buff that shoe. And also remember, uh, you can always gently clean your shoe shine brush by just buffing it against a clean towel, uh, but you really wouldn't ever want to clean it with any type of soap or water. Uh, Alexander, thank you for your question, uh, and we look forward to sending you one of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces for you to use on one of your pairs of shoes. Our last question is from a No Chaser Guitar Channel on our Alan Edmonds $50 challenge. Uh, his comment reads, I have a pair of Walnut McAllisters I bought on eBay last December. After many cleaners, creams, and wax polishes, I now use Saphir products. I first cleaned up all the junk off the shoes with the Reno mat, and after every week of wearing, I clean the shoes using saddle soap uh, and a little Renovator. I like my McAllisters to stay as light as possible, so I don't use any pigmented cream or polish. I, however, considering using neutral pomadeer cream and or Pat Deluxe. Any feedback on the current method or plan? Thanks. So great question. Uh, and 
You're absolutely right. If you're really looking to uh, keep the color of your shoes as light as possible, uh, you're probably going to want to avoid using a pigmented cream polish as much as possible. Uh, and, and that's where the Saphir Renovateur really comes in as just being a fantastic all-purpose uh, conditioning product. You can use it to not only condition the leather, uh, but because it contains those soft waxes, you can also use it to build up a nice soft shine. Now using a neutral pomadier cream polish would be a little bit redundant to using the Saphir Renovateur, but you could use a neutral wax polish if you wanted to really elevate the shine by introducing those hard waxes into the finish. You know, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, all the pigments in, in any pigmented cream polish is gonna be transparent. So it's not going to radically alter or change the finish of a shoe. Uh, and at some point, you're gonna scuff or nick uh, or discolor a pair of shoes, uh, and you are going to need to introduce pigment. Now, if you're really worried about darkening the shoe, you can always choose a pigment color that's just slightly lighter than the color of the shoe, and that'll help prevent any type of darkening that would otherwise occur. Uh, even if you were to apply black polish on a pair of brown shoes, uh, you could really pull that off very effectively using the Saphir Reno Mat. So here at The Hanger Project, uh, you know, we recommend experimenting and having a little bit of fun, uh, just playing around with the colors to help antique or burnish and really evolve the patina of a pair of shoes. Thank you for your comments. We really appreciate all of your comments and questions on our channel. And I'd love to send you a pair of our sovereign grade shoelaces just as a small token appreciation for your involvement on our channel. Thank you again for all of your comments and questions. Uh, we genuinely appreciate uh, hearing from all of our viewers and I really love reading all your comments and questions personally and try to get back to as many of those as possible. So remember, uh, our YouTube channel isn't just a place for us to share our videos with you, but it's also a platform uh, for us to really interact, answer your questions, and help share with you some of the things that we've learned here at The Hanger Project. If you liked this video, give us the thumbs up, or better yet, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications by clicking the bell uh, directly to the right of the subscribe button so that you can receive notifications whenever we post new videos here on our YouTube channel. And of course, please remember to visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest selection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other products for the well-dressed. And while you're there, take a moment, sign up for our newsletter so that you can learn whenever we release new products, run promotions, as well as our weekly digest of videos that we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Thanks for joining us.